Hey everyone, I hope you are all enjoying borderless art thus far. Today, I am lucky to share my time with John P. Starr, and I'm so excited for you all to get to know them better. So let's just get them started. Um, John P., feel free to introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. My name is John P. or John P. Starr, and, and I'm from the most beautiful island on the Caribbean, Puerto. Rico. I'm actually right here in Puerto Rico visiting, so I'm super happy. So hi from Puerto Rico. <laughs> I'm actually located located in Oakland, California, um, based in Oakland, California, working with Axis Dance Company. And yeah, I'm an artist and I'm super happy to be here with you all sharing my story and my journey as a dancer. It's an honor and I would love to hear more about your journey to becoming a professional dancer and how you've developed as the artist you are today. Well, oh, let me, I'm gonna start from the beginning. <laughs> so yeah, my whole life, I was like, you know, like any other human, I wanna dance, I wanna be an artist, I wanna do, what you see on the TV, <laughs> but for a long time, I was like, oh, I don't, I cannot do that because my body is different to everything I see on the TV or everything I see, you know, in the, for a long time, I was like, I cannot be an artist. I cannot be, you know, a dancer. I cannot do that because I cannot walk. I cannot do that. And everyone, you know, in the society was saying the same indirectly. So. I was growing with that idea that, you know, those things were just for people without disabilities. And until I was, you know, in the in college, after I was already an adult. And also I, I tried some other arts because, you know, I tried music because, you know, it's something that someone seated can do. So I was trying to approach art. I think art was always calling me. But then when I was in college, I was like, you know, not happy. I was study science. And I wasn't feeling happy at all. I was like, you know, so I was, you know, like empty. So I, I, I start trying to find new ways to, you know, to, to love my job because I was, doing research in science, like I was, you know, it was really interesting, but it wasn't my thing. So in my second year of college, I changed from the university I was studying to another one different where, where they have more art programs. So I moved in a, to a, from science to music program first because I knew some music when I was in school. So I started like, okay, let me find my way in music, like to find what I wanna do, you know, in my life. So I started music in this new university, the University of Puerto Rico and taking different classes and keep like just finding, finding what I wanted to do. I started taking theater classes like, Mostly what, what I was doing here in Puerto Rico was theater more than, than dance. And I started like, like doing the theater process, my processing, that's where I start know, knowing my body and finding like, oh, I can do you know stuff. <laughs> yeah. So I was, uh, I start meeting also professors mm -hmm. in college that encouraged me like, I see other people doing stuff. I see these people doing this, like you can do it too. So that opened my mind. Okay, I like, I can do something like, and like, I think in college, like where, where I finally like felt like, oh my God, like there is a possibility for me to do whatever I want. Yeah. And, and you know, more information and tools because I think sometimes we don't have the information to know like, oh, there is companies, there is classes, there is scholarship that help people with disability. So 
yeah, I start keep taking theater classes and movement classes, and I start like get you know getting more curious about dance and movement. Mm -hmm. And with this knowledge that okay, everything is more possible. We are living in a world that you know people with different bodies can do you know whatever they want. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I can do. I start contacting choreographers and professors related to dance mm -hmm. and at the beginning it was hard mm -hmm. because they didn't want it like to work with people with disability because they were afraid like oh i don't know how to deal with a disability Mm -hmm. I don't know how to deal, you know, with yeah. with a different body. So sometimes I was rejected, like for, from classes and professor, like here in the island. Until one professor told me, like one choreographer, he told me, "Oh yeah, I know like something about you know physically integrated dance, mm -hmm. and yeah, let's start working with something. Let's start." Uh, you know, he didn't know anything like concrete at all, but he was open to work with me, you know, to find a way. So I think, yeah, like from that on, that was in 2012. Mm -hmm. And I started like taking classes of movement while I was doing theater. So I started you know, per doing performance and movement. And I think that way, that was my my start like as a performer artist. Okay. And yeah, I was from 2012 until 2016, working with theater and movement and performance here in Puerto Rico. And in 2016, I found about Kanduko Dance Dance Company. Mm -hmm. It's a physically integrated dance company, but based in in the UK. Mm -hmm. And and I, that was my first, you know, connection. I, I saw a video in YouTube, and I was like, "Wow, there is a physically integrated dance company." There is that is done for people with wheelchair and disabilities. So wow, I need to go there. I need to see these people. And I didn't know that, you know, access and everything was here in the USA and I was closer in Puerto <laughs> Rico to the USA. Right. And I went to London <laughs> to, to find out that, you know, that here in the United States, access was, you know, also happening and, so much more like physically integrated dance company. I don't know the names, but I know now that, you know, like dancing wheels mm -hmm. and full radios. That's some of the, uh, Heidi Lasky. Oh, yeah. Those are some of the names that came to my mind, but there is more, more, much more. Like mm -hmm. it was, it was more, much more happening. That and I never had that information when I was growing, you know, when I was a child, when I was trying to find that, you know, that guidance when I was a kid. So I went to London and met Kanduko, and it was, you know, a life changing experience. Mm -hmm. I was dancing with other people like me and other different bodies. In a new country, I went alone. Like I was like, wow, I, this is a new world, literally. Mm -hmm. That was my first time, you know, out of Puerto Rico alone, you know, and out of America alone. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you feel vulnerable, you feel small, you feel like, oh my God, I'm gonna get lost and no one gonna find me. Never, never again. <laughs> but I went there and it really really gave me more confidence and like really gave me like wow this is possible like this this world is real so after that like I started looking for more companies and more like dance groups 
for opportunities because I was looking also for a job. Like I wanted to, you know, to find auditions. I wanted to find and you know anything that gave me you know a start because before that, I wa I never had a, a a professional like you know dance job or a professional even training for you know for a career or in dance. So. I was trying to build that, you know, from from the start, from you know, from from the beginning, because now was, you know, I'm, I'm my 22 years old. That's when I found out, okay, this is possible for me. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I <laughs> I talk a lot, but <laughs> no, oh uh, <laughs> you all day. So. <laughs> Yeah, so when I went to Kanduko and start finding for different companies, Kanduko invited me again to to an audition they're gonna have, okay. and and I went to take the audition, but you know it was like an invitation, but without any compromise because it were like twenty six artists from I know from around the world that went to that to the audition, you know, it was my first audition, like in dance and physically integrated dance. So I was like, you know, it was, I was learning a lot. Mm -hmm. And after that, I came back to Puerto Rico and like, you know, I didn't make the audition and I was a little sad, obviously I'm a human. <laughs> 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 but then I was also like, okay, I'm not gonna surrender. I need to keep looking for, for you know, for opportunities. And even I used the videos I took, you know, when I was with Kanduko, and I used those videos to also apply to companies here. And like, hey, I don't know if you have auditions. You know, I was sending emails to everybody until I write to Axis. I wrote um, I wrote to Axis like an email and I send them photos and videos about, you know, of my work and everything. And at that moment, they did have like an official audition. So I was like, oh, I don't know, like, okay, that's what I'm looking for. So they offered me to go to the summer intensive. That is a workshop that we have for international people and national. And it's a workshop that you go to learn choreography, improvisation and teaching, training. So I was like, oh, I don't wanna go to a workshop. You know, I want an opportunity for a job. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> So I was like, I don't know, you know, and then Mark, like he keep like telling me, we have we have also a scholarship that you know maybe you can apply for the scholarship. So I was like, oh, let me try the scholarship. You know, I'm not gonna lose anything. Like just trying to apply for the scholarship. Mm -hmm. So I applied for the scholarship. They gave me a full scholarship. So I was, was like, okay, this is this is a signal, you know, the universe is talking to me. I need to go, no matter if it's a workshop. And you know, I saw it as an opportunity for them to see me and see, you know, see everything that I can do, you know, in real life. So I was like, I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> and I remember that was in 2017. Okay. I went to Axis Summer Intensive and yeah, it was another life-changing experience because it was people from all over United States and out of the United States, like dancing together, creating together, outside, inside. Like I was like, wow, this is heaven. Like, you know, so much diversity, so much, you know, different bodies so much, you know, freedom. And at, at the same time, I respect like everyone was, you know, it was my first time when someone asked me about my pronouns, like no one before was like asking me about my pronouns or about my access needs, you know, like 
little details that make you feel more part, you know, like make you feel like, like you know, you are included in the, in the, in the group, in the system, like those things, I was like, wow, wow, I want to be here. <laughs> so yeah. I was, you know, I dance and dance those two, those, those, that week. I, and yeah, after I took the summer intensive, I came back to Puerto Rico and also I, 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 I connect with this other physically integrated dance company in Miami called Karen Peterson Dancers. They offer me like an opportunity to work with them, but they at the same time access told me like, hey, we want to offer you a contract like, for one year. And like, yeah, we, we want you to work with us. And I was like, what? You know, from, from trying to find a new opportunity, trying to find like this new beginning. Now I was like, you know, with two opportunities that I can make a decision. I, I was like, wow, this is like what I was looking for. And Obviously, <laughs> I made the decision to come with Axis. That was in 2017. And it was at the same time that the hurricane came to Puerto Rico. So everything in my life was up and down, up yeah. and down. Yeah. Because I was like super happy with this, with this news. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, everything was upside down in Puerto Rico. Everything was like out you know we were disconnected from the world mm. so like I was like I need to make this happen I need to you know keep training mm. keep my mind you know in that so I'm able to you know in January that way that was when I started my contract I am I'm ready you know and, and to work because that was the opportunity I was looking for so long I was, you know, nothing is going to stop me. <laughs> and yeah, since then, I came here to the Bay. I'm here in Puerto Rico right now, but <laughs> I moved. <laughs> I moved in 2018 to Oakland, California. And since there, I started working with Axis and I, I made the right decision, you know. I made, you know, the right choice of coming to the Bay Area, going to California, because it really changed my life as an artist and as a human. Like I was more independent, you know, the access, the access, the accessibility mm -hmm. really impact my life and change, you know, my perception. Everything was more, you know, not easy, but you know, ac you know, accessible <laughs> is the word. Yeah. So uh, I was super happy that I, as a human, I felt so comfortable mm -hmm. that let me be more creative and, and let me be more, you know, the artist I wanted to be. And since then, you know, I've been three years now with Axis, traveling the world and teaching, impacting life. Like I cannot ask for more. Like that was what I was looking for. I'm, I'm also sharing my knowledge. It's not just performing. I'm also trying to show the people that they also can do everything they want in their own way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're giving back. And one thing I really appreciate, uh, sorry, appreciate about what you've told me is that I mean, a lot of people aren't honest about their journey to becoming a professional dancer or artist. And a lot of times it's romanticized, but it's not easy for artists of color or artists with disabilities because of disability. And art feeds your soul and eventually art gave back to you. And now you're giving back to everyone, which I admire. And I think everyone needs to hear like the honest truth of how hard you've worked to get to where you are. Cause now everyone knows your name. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, my next question for you is how does your identity specifically inform your art? I don't know if it's me, but I think it formed a lot, you know, like I feel like I wanted to be part of my art, you know, mm -hmm. and even my art is my identity, you know, both complement each other. Like, 
So yeah, like I think me from being from Puerto Rico, like or just being a person with a disability or a person of color, mm -hmm. just that I, like, you know, like it's you can see it in my art because I like to show like. You know, like I like to show that, like, not in words, like, you know, in my movement, like, in you know, my skin is is my his is history. You know, I have history in my skin. You know, every time I speak with someone and they ask me about my accent, I I let them know. You know, I'm from Puerto Rico. You know, I I'm from this place, and this is. This is who I am. So I think, yeah, my identity and my art, you know, are super like complemented and and I'm super proud like, of that. I, I think also that's one of the things like I I like uh, of being an artist, you know, like empower like myself and my confidence. And I think that's part of my identity. So you know, they are in the same world for me. <laughs> it's not separate. I mean, first and foremost, my identity is who I am and what makes me an artist. So I completely agree with what you're saying. And I love what you were saying about how your skin is history. I mean, yeah, everything that we carry within our bodies is why we move. It's to share that history, to share the richness of our lineage. So I think that's so important to know. Yeah. Um, so as you know, the dance world locates you within a predominantly white and able-bodied career and you didn't know if there were any options for you. So how has this impacted your work? Yeah, and like, I think also when I didn't have more information, you know, I was like, oh, this is okay. Like when you don't have the information, you, you live okay. Like, but then, now that I'm in this dance world and I'm seeing and I'm experiencing mm -hmm. what happened here, you know, and that, you know, Axis is a company of minorities right now, like, and it's a super, like, I know, like, we are in a bubble, you can say, like, comparing, like, to other places, like, mm -hmm. you know, talking about diversity and, like, you know, racial difference and you know all these topics that we are talking right now in society mm -hmm. now i understand you know how how hard it was for me comparing to other people you know that never need to to maybe experience stuff that i have you know i'm not complaining you know i, I don't regret anything also that i i don't at the opposite i feel like everything that I've done made, you know, more, you know, great my art mm -hmm. and, and, and made me, you know, create from a, a different perspective. But, but, you know, like it's crazy how unbalanced and uneven sometimes, you know, are the opportunities for people, you know, without disability or full able bodies, mm -hmm. because I consider myself full able body you know yeah. even society mm -hmm. said the opposite so it's a lot of, of that like I'm still like trying to you know understand the world we are living like and all this social different like I'm you know too super against all this different I think we are all the same like and even like you know in this dance world like we are all the same we are all creative mm -hmm. we are all artists so that's my goal i mostly like to keep letting know that people like i believe that not that's not right that other people have more benefits i just want everyone to have the same <laughs> definitely and it took me a long time as well to figure out that it's harder especially as an artist of color and like like you said, artists with disabilities to get to the same place. And it's like, we've been working so hard. And then you realize, why am I working this hard when some other people don't have to work this hard? And it's shocking and it's 
something I cope with constantly and I know a lot of other artists of color cope with. Um, but then again, like you said, it's what's made me who I am. And that's where my identity comes into play with my art. And that's why it's so important that we continue using art to amplify our voices. And yeah, that's mm -hmm. really, really important. Um, so as a current rising artist and also our followers are current rising artists and students of color, how can we create more structures that support accessibility in the arts? This one is the hard question. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, you know, my, for, you know, my, I don't, my advice, <laughs> I don't, you know, like in my experience, like, I think more like more than structure, like I think we need more busy, this, you know, be more in the in the space and go more to show ourselves, you know, because we need more visibilization. I think is the world. I'm not sure, <laughs> but you know, like <laughs> we need, you know, people need to 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 see that that we are, you know, we are here working at the same level of any other company, and I think when people start, you know, watching us like with that level or with that, you know, like with that respect, I think we're gonna be more, you know, like I'm the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a heavy, heavy question. Yeah, and like, <laughs> yeah, like, I think like, how we can structure it, maybe, you know, educating people like from, from, you know, early, early ages, you know, showing people like from talking from my experience, you know, that I never had that preparation mm -hmm. as a person, you know, with color, with a disability or or different minorities or anything. I think what I needed, you know, to, to have more structure was, you know, that information since I was, you know, a child, maybe create this group or these spaces that are already, you know, are already rising, you know, with this, with, with all this diversity and inclusion that is arising in the world. I think with that information, like since the beginning of early ages, you know, gonna gonna let the people know and 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 prepare themselves to you know to a more like okay, this is real for me. I can prepare myself to be an artist. So I have this program that helped me, so I can you know go there. So I think that creates a structure, you know, for people like in the way that they have somewhere to have, you know, to grow as an artist or anything they want to be. And I think that can be helpful. <laughs> yeah, that's so important. And creating structures that also give space to the minoritized because we don't have spaces that were mm -hmm. built for us. And that's what's needed. And I remember you saying that you didn't really know you could pursue the arts until you got to college. Same. I didn't really understand my worth and my value until I got to college to where I saw other professors who looked like me and got to listen to what they were saying about how to get into the arts. And that that's so important. It's the first step into the door. I mm -hmm. agree. Yeah. Um, I only have two more questions for you. So what do you want your legacy to be? Well, yeah. I Jumpy Star Legacy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, like, my, I want to let, you know, really show the people that everything is possible in this world. No matter what you want to do, no matter if you want to be a pop star or if you want to be, you know, a firefighter, no matter what you want to do. You can do it no matter if you have a disability or not. Do it, be free, just enjoy your life. You know, that's what I want to show to the people with my art, to be free 
and you know empower with their life you know and enjoy life because being alive is beautiful it can be intense sometimes you know like i'm not gonna say it's perfect mm -hmm. but you know when you find your way for me i found my own way of moving and create from my reality and i think it's beautiful you know in their own way so yeah that's what i want to show and, and and leave to the world <laughs> Yeah, and you already are. Um, and my last question for you is, since CAC serves students of color in a wide range of disciplines, what advice would you give to aspiring artists getting ready to get into their fields? Well, like, for, like, in general or like? Yeah, in general, I'm an aspiring artist. I'm a little scared because of this <laughs> pandemic, like, what would you do to maybe continue to feed your soul, even if things aren't as easy getting into the field? Well, I'm, I'm gonna maybe sound a little cliche, but <laughs> <laughs> art, art is what keep me alive. Like this year I try, you know, I love to dance, but also I like do performance and be more expressive, like theater. So I was looking to how can I keep being dancing and be more theatrical and stuff. So this year I start practicing my drag. I start practicing makeup and hair. And that surprisingly keep me super distracted and like a way to be anxious, a way to be, you know, worry about what was happening. You know, I was, you know, trying to be creative every time, you know, spend time and energy in stuff that maybe, you know, made me happy because I like to be creative. I like to show art in different ways. And right now that's one of the way I'm, I'm finding I, I can express myself doing drag and I can dance and do theater and music and be pretty and beautiful. So that's how I, I found calm and myself, you know, happiness, doing art, being creative yes. and, and, you know, distracting my mind. Yeah. And I know I've only met you a couple of times, but you constantly remind me that art is such a healing thing and it's used as a survival tactic, especially during this pandemic. It's been everything that takes me back home inside. And as you were saying, like, it brings us closer to our identities. And I think that's so important. I think this is a great way to close. So John P, I want to say thank you so much for sharing your time with CAC. I hope that everyone can go and see his art and they have so many things that they're going to continue to share with the world. So get ready for John P star everyone because they're going to be huge. <laughs>